I'm from Israel. I've been in the Sifu Force seminar here. It was an amazing. I've been in a lot of seminar uh, of uh, a lot of martial arts in my life, and this is uh, the best that I have been. Uh, the system is amazing. Uh, everything was great. Uh, thank you very much. So it was a great seminar, and uh, I'd like to thank Sifu for teaching us all the great stuff that he brought today. Uh, a lot of uh, physics and uh, movement techniques that really enriched my uh, knowledge and that's it, thanks. Well, I have known Sikufu from his videos and uh, now I met him in person and I must say that I've been to many seminars, I learned several martial, martial arts uh, systems and he's really the best teacher I, I ever met because he, le he has lots of knowledge, he really knows what he's talking about, he's an amazing martial artist and he really knows how to pass his knowledge to his students. He doesn't have ego, he wants you to learn, he doesn't hide anything and you can really feel what he's talking about. You can really feel his system and he, you feel that he wants you to learn, he wants you to, to extend your knowledge he, he gives you the tools that you need to practice even when you're alone and become better at your martial arts system. Well, my name is Wesley Ruiz. I have been in martial arts since uh, 1966 and I've done everything from uh, Taekwondo, uh, Judo, Aikido, Jiu Jitsu uh, and I have a system called Hirudo and it's a street fighting system, uh, combatives if you will. So I do sidearms, shotgun, knife, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. And uh, I met Sifu uh, here about three years ago. Uh, and ever since I've been following him, he's got awesome techniques that even though I've been in martial arts for about uh, 47 years, I still learn from him uh, how to redirect that energy from strength to pure energy. So uh, it's been awesome. Uh, I have improved my, my fighting system because of it. And uh, I think it's the most amazing thing uh, I've learned. And every year I come here just wanting to be with him one more time. And now that uh, he has this website, I'm gonna be uh, doing the webinars. Uh, so I hope that to learn even more with him. Uh, I think that's about all I have to say. It's powerful. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Russell. This is my first time at uh, Inner Shaolin uh, uh, Seminar uh, here in Washington, D.C. Uh, I've got about four years experience in martial arts, mainly progressive Kempo, uh, with some other MMA styles mixed in. Um, I found Inner Shaolin online looking for ways to improve my Kung Fu, and the way Sifu Fu teaches and the way the website is set up. It's very easy to navigate. Uh, it's very understandable. Uh, the instruction is very detailed and uh, it's, it just, um, it improved me before I ever came to the seminar. But now that I'm here at the seminar, I've had a chance to meet other people that have the same interests and that we are able to experience and feel the energy that Sifu Fu teaches. Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Faz Khan. I am an emergency physician in New York, in Long Island. I found Enter Shaolin on the internet. Um, I do have a background, at least in theoretical martial arts. I enjoy reading about them. I've practiced uh, Jeet Kune Do and uh, some mixed systems. And I find the Enter Shaolin uh, method and Sifu, um, Sifu Fu and his core students uh, uh, incredibly friendly, very open, and deceptively skilled. They may seem earthy crunchy and, you know, holding hands and everything, but they can be very deadly, as I just found out. And uh, the system is uh, based on um, scientific principles, which Sifu Fu explains very well. And I have actually, I can say, I've never encountered anything like it. And I've done Thai, I've done Little Wing Chun, I've done a lot of Kali and Filipino stuff. I'm nowhere near an expert, but I know enough about them to know what Sifu Fu is teaching uh, is excellent and it's definitely worth a very close look. So um, I'm happy to be part of this and I hope to uh, train with them as much as I can. 
Thank welcome you. to you know uh, day two some of you are, are fresh to us on uh, day two so welcome and uh, real quick can we just have everyone go around since we do have some new faces and just you know say who you are if you want to give us a little information about your training no or more how than you five words. <laughs> <laughs> or that uh, please do so so we're gonna start with Gil over here and we'll go around I'm Gil Gil Green I've been here since uh, April 2016 so I'm coming on three years and I've, I'm happy to be here. I'm seeing myself grow. I really appreciate it. I thought you'd grow too. You look like you didn't talk. My name is Wayne Huey. I'm here from uh, San Francisco and uh, glad to learn more about what Andrew Charlotte has to offer. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Vita Holland. I'm here from Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I'm new to this uh, inner showing. And I, it's my second day, and I'm learning a lot. I'm hoping it's going to help my back. <laughs> I'm Mary B. from Colorado, and I'm new, baby. So I'm enjoying this, and it's great. Scott Hall from Colorado, also here, learn and improve my every aspect of my life. Hi, I'm Dave Fole. I joined in February, and so far, I'm happy to be a member. Hi, I'm Cyrus. I'm actually a doctor of Chinese medicine, and I've done a lot of research on martial arts, and that's why I'm here, because there's something here that's not in a lot of other places. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm fortunate enough to train with Sifu in New Jersey, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> hey, I'm Hersey Gray. I'm from the Philadelphia area. I've uh, been uh, part of Inner Shaolin probably for two years now, about two years. Yeah. I'm enjoying myself. I'm instruct I do private lessons with Sifu Larry. Hi, my name is Greg Jordan. I'm from Ventura, California, and I've been following Sifu on Intercontinental since last spring. Um, we're trying to get through the, the NDN 101. Um, still in the beginning parts, but really liking the Qigong and happy to be here. Cool. Yeah, I'm Jacob. I'm from Cheyenne, and I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Uh, Brian Wall from uh, South Carolina. I've been a member for about a year, and I'm just here to be a sponge. So I <laughs> Marlon Twyman. I'm a physician from Dayton, Ohio. Been with Inner Shaolin since the beginning. I'm an avid also. I'm Ron Billick from Cincinnati, Ohio. I've been with Inner Shaolin for about two years. Second seminar. It's, if it can be, it's better than the first. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Daryl Maupin from Indianapolis, Indiana. I've been with Inner Shaolin about three years, and this is my second seminar. I'm Stan Zellman. I've been in about a week. I'm from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Looking forward to uh, getting to know all of you. Hi, I'm Terry Hall from San Francisco, and I practice uh, Tai Chi. My name is Logan Maupin, and I'm here from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm enjoying the seminar. <laughs> My name is Jason Blahoon. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, it's my first seminar with Thatcher Shaolin, and excited to be here and excited to meet everybody. My name is David Malker. I'm from Colorado. Uh, I teach uh, Israeli martial arts. I've been following Sifu for just about 20 years. Uh, I want to take an opportunity to thank uh, Sister Jamie and Larry, Sifu Larry, for the excellent, <laughs> excellent work. Uh, Anto Tai Chi will be anything without those guys, so thank you. Hey family, what is up? Welcome to another public Q&A. I think I'm getting better enter at this Shaolin thing. and enter Tai Chi. I'm your host, CJ Jamie. This is Sifu Fu. And Sifu Larry, I think, is going to pop in in a second here. Let us know how the sound is, if you can see us OK and hear us OK. And also let us know where you're coming in from if you haven't already. Did you want to say something? Bosnich. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right, that, that was interesting. All right, so family, uh, real quick, Steve Larry wanted me to ask what you guys and gals think about having a seminar um, for- Here in Jersey, they don't come to the seminars, we're just quitting. For our birthday, which is going to be on May 1st, but that's a Sunday, so it'll be like, you know, the 29th. Birthday. I'm talking about Inter Shalian's birthday. Oh. Our oh, oh. birthday. We don't share the same birthday. We just share that's the same birthday month, bro. That's okay. what I said. <laughs> so so the, it's going to be uh, for April 29th, April 30th, 
and May 1st, which May 1st will be eight years of Inter Shaolin. So Ooh, I drink to that. I think that would be a really cool way for us to celebrate our eighth year and be able to wow. get to train with everyone again. So let us know if you think that would be a great idea. We are going to uh, put out like a survey and stuff like that and come up with some more details, obviously, to share. But right now, we're just kind of putting some feelers out there to see if you guys and gals are ready for a seminar. So let us know. All right, let's see who is on. We have Alex on. Hey, Alex. We have Matthew. John M. is on, coming in from South Jersey. We got Ed coming in from Rhode Island. Shozan is on. We got Israel Bryson on. Hey, how you doing? Eddie Tolby coming in from Chattown, a.k.a. Chicago. We got Akbar. Um, he says, hi, Sifus. All right, we'll answer that in a second. Give me a moment there, Akbar. You are the first question of today. We got love from Israel. I don't know if that's Guy or someone else, because unfortunately, I, I know some Hebrew, but not enough to decode that name. So let me know if that's Guy. Love from Israel. Israel. Let me know. Let me know if it's you. Um, let's see. KS coming in from Germany. We also got Matthew on. Chisau Musician is on as well. Oh, OK. Um, yes, I don't know who this naked online strips without clothing is, but sorry, bye bye. <laughs> you, you are, you are getting uh, kicked out. Peace. I don't know. I don't know what that was all well, about. He might be asking. He's look. His comment was doing positive. Things. No, look. No, no, no. no Sifu. Okay. You, you got to work on your emoji. Um, you know stuff. That that was no. Okay. No, they're, they're just trying to get people to go click on their stuff is what they're trying to do. I got um, All right, let's see if there's anyone else. That was interesting. Yeah, uh, hey, Jose, good, good to have, have you, have you on. on. Hey, hey, Edward, Edward. Good, good to see you. you. All right, we, we got Easy Tolby. I think I already gave him a shout-out. Yes, I did. And we got also, oh, Marcos, you're on two platforms. All right, so Marcos is on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, if you are on YouTube or Facebook, if you haven't already, please share this and like this video. It helps us to be able to get more exposure to what we do. And you know, who knows, maybe someone that is on your friend list doesn't even know you do martial arts because maybe you don't share much on your you know, personal Facebook or whatever other social media you're on. And they'll be like, oh, I didn't know you were interested in that. And you could become you know, best buds and training partners. Just a thought, just a thought. But help us keep doing these things. <laughs> Marcus says any seminar is a good idea in my opinion. I agree with you. I'm, I'm totally with you, but I know uh, last year I spent like literally two months doing all this like massive planning and stuff to get seven people to say yes. After we had tons of people like, yeah, 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 well, well. But part of it's COVID too. Yeah, I know. Uh, this world. Yeah, where, where is that at, by the way? Just, just Ukraine. saying. Ukraine. It got changed to Ukraine. Just sipping on my tea up in here. Okay, so let's go back to that question. All right, that was from Akbar. Akbar says, hi, Sifus. It said that blocking is ineffective because the victim's reaction time is slower. I understand in, he said NDM, but it's NDN. So two Ns, no Ms. Um, you intercept and punch together, but it's is it realistic <coughs> to be able to intercept at all? So we don't just intercept, we're striking their strike. Yeah, okay. Uh, to be clear, in a fight, if you're the one intercepting to attack, you're putting the pressure on them. So it's not like they're going to be able to throw 200 punches at you. Uh, you got to understand that. Uh, the other part is, is obviously you can't block every punch, okay? If someone would throw 100 punches at me, I'm not going to block every punch. I'm going to get hit at one of them, or two of them, or even three of them. Um, but the idea is, if you can initiate the attack and land the punch on them, it's harder for them to hit you because they'll right. be put on the defensive mode. So understand that you know, you're know you training so you can intercept so you can get the strike quick. That's the point of the uh, interception, um, to, to create the strike. That's why I always like, if you don't have intercepted hands to create the strike, then you're not doing it right. Hands should never have to reset to create the strike. If it does, then you're not doing it right at all. Uh, hands always have to be able to intercept to create the strike. Uh, if you have to reset to do that, then it's wrong. That's one. Two. Um, when you're doing the attack and you put the pressure on them and you do like weapon striking techniques, it's going to cause their limbs to be uh, hard to, uh, to strike with because now it's in pain. I uh, see if Larry can attest to that. I can attest to that. Oh, There's yeah. students who do weapon striking <laughs> yes. who've done the technique where people just actually stop fighting. 
Uh, my student, I taught yeah, her how to say, walk the plank. Yeah, I was going to say, if you do it right... They're probably going to think twice about yeah. anything else because it just hurts. My student's a police officer. I taught him how to weapon strike. And he had somebody try to punch him. And he did the weapon striking on him. And um, he said before I could even punch him, the guy went to the ground grabbing his arm. He was in so much pain. Yeah. He, the fight was out of People him. People don't get hit like that. That's why. Like it's, uh, a... it's, it's very, very painful. When you're throwing that punch and you generate that power, it's just imagine if he's punching full force. Imagine like you're on the wall, he goes full force, and you just kind of move the side, his fist lands into a uh, concrete wall. Of course, it's going to hurt that bad. Okay, and that's the same idea when you do intercepting hands. Uh, not receiving hands. This is what you got to understand. You're not waiting for it to come to you. You're timing it to go into them. Uh, receiving hands is you bring it up and you're waiting for that impact to come. That's wrong. That's bad. That's what blocking is. Right. You do not block. We don't, that's why we don't defend because we're receiving the energy. You got to initiate. So um, I, I call it intercepting hands. I intercept it. I meet it at a point with the intent to create the strike. So understand that. That's, so that's a, um, and, and like I said, once you're on the attack and you go and you put the pressure on them, you're creating the, the, the thrust on their end. You're putting the pressure on them. They're not able to put it back on you. And if they try, you weapon strike it. So every time they try to put their hands on you, you're going to do damage. If you're not trying to do damage, then you're doing yeah. it wrong. You don't want to sit there and try to block them, defend them, deflect them, do all that stuff. You create the strike. Attack, the and attack. after that, then you can deflect or you can, uh, you can take down or you can knock it away, whatever. But you must intercept with the intent to hit first before you do anything else. That's why all these receiving hands, they don't work in a fight because they're not able to do the damage. The guy's going to dictate the pressure. He's going to dictate the attack. You're supposed to do that. Not them. And if you're allowing them to do that to you, then you're doing it wrong. For, for sure, he can throw the first strike. That's fine. But you're the one who's going to land the first strike. That's the goal. It doesn't matter who throws first. It's the one who lands it first. Your job is to land the strike first, not throw the first punch. You could if you want to, but you, you got to land the first strike. Okay? So they can throw first, but you're the one who makes the impact to create the damage first. So that's how you want to do it all the time. So that's how you want to make sure that your, your intent, your mindset, your, your physical action has to play, uh, make it that, that manner. You, you understand? So it's like she's throwing a hook punch at me. I'm not going like this and, and putting it up and waiting for it to come to me. I should throw it like, mm -hmm. okay? I, I make the Ooh. hit and I go in for the hit. So I'm, I'm, I'm going at one time. And there's a technique to doing that. Or if she's throwing a wide punch and I see a wide punch, I'm just gonna throw the punch at her. I, whatever I can read as a person punch doing in any face. type of the, uh, intent, my job is to create the strike first, whether I hit her face, whether I hit her arm, whether I hit her legs. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, I could be like this and far away, like, look, I don't want to fight. And I'm, I keep it certain distance. And when they're coming at me, I show my hands, like, boom, and I just get the kick out. Because I want them to be off guard. You know, I, and I did do that. I, I, I got jumped in college. And I stepped back. I, I raised my hands. I told him he's got the wrong guy. But I was setting myself up to attack him. Because I was like, look, this guy is, looks like he wants to attack me. I could tell, like, he wants to mug me. And I just stepped back, raised my hands. I let him see my hands. I could see his eyes fixated on my hands like i surrendering to him. But I had sunk into my cat stance. I waited for that timing. I kept a certain distance. So I made him go slower in, uh, in attacking mode because he has to travel further now. So he had to telegraph his movements and I was able to get the strike in first. He went in for the strike, but he had to take a step to come like, and go in. Well, when his body had to step in, I already attacked him. I didn't wait for the attack to come. I made the attack come. So this is what you got to keep in your mindset, that that's how you're always doing it. No matter what they strike, you attack him first. And then you attack the face. It's not you attack his arm, step backwards, attack his arm, step backwards, and wait for him. And it doesn't matter. If you do it right, they are in a lot of pain. Okay, they are a lot of pain. The weapon strikes that we do is like getting stabbed with a, a, a six inch knife going into your arm. It's not gonna continue to function too well when that happens. A lot of people, and Sifu Larry can attest, like I said, he done uh, fighting where he weapon struck people and that's the end of the fight. I've done it where I ended the fight. Uh, a lot of my students done it where they end the fight. It usually ends the fight. Um, because when you're in that much pain, I, I don't know if you know this, okay? Here's a little bit of uh, science for you, okay? The more you're in the center or you attack the center of the body, the less acute the pain is. So it's not sharp, but the more deadly it is. It takes away your energy more. The further you go from center, it's less deadly.
but it's more painful. The pain becomes more acute. If you were to pinch in here hard as you can, you're like, ow, that hurts. You pinch your nail, you'll be screaming your head off, okay? You stab someone here, you're, they're gonna die if they hit the, the, mm. the heart, right? You stab them in the hand, they're gonna scream in pain, but they won't die, it's not vital, but it is acute. You hit someone here, the pain is not acute. It just takes away your energy, but it's not sharp. That's human anatomy, just to let you know. So when you're weapon striking their limbs and you create that damage, it is very painful. It can end someone's ability to wanna fight you because they're in a lot of pain. Now if they're on drugs, that's a different story. But that's when you start striking the center line, striking the face. But that, that's the idea, the premise of, of when you intercept, you are creating a strike out of it. You are not doing what we call, I call receiving hands. You're not bringing it up and waiting. You're, you're not striking. You're receiving. You have to time that movement to where when she's throwing a punch, do it very slow. I'm not bringing it up. Or, or no, hook punch. Okay. I'm not bringing it up and waiting for it to come to me. I'm not waiting for it. I bring it up to create the hit. I'm going into her. I'm not letting her hit me. I am hitting her. I create the force to do the attack first. She's throwing first punch. I land the first punch. That's right. what you want to keep in your mind. Attack the attack. Shalom, guys. I was right. It was you. I thought so. You should you should change your 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 uh, picture to like you. So then I definitely will know it's you. But I'll do my best to try to remember that you're a purple circle with what looks like an upside down L. <laughs> but I know it's not. It's a Hebrew letter, obviously. But I'm just gonna remember that. But good to see you on. Uh, we had a couple people say that they would really see? like uh, to come. Uh, Toby says, give me time and date and I'll be on a bus. Ed says, I'd pay for a spot but wouldn't be able to attend. Ah, well, we are going to have an option uh, to do live streaming too. So um, for those that can't come but want to still be able to watch it live or watch the replay if like the timing doesn't work out wherever you're at, we got Pure Luck coming in from Long Island, New York. Uh, Bob says, would love to go to the seminar, would need heads up to put on my calendar. So the tentative dates, I don't know if you heard me, are uh, April 29th, 30th through May 1st. So April 29th, April 30th, and May 1st. Um, as far as the cost, I'm working that all up right now. Like we just want to kind of get a pulse and see if people were interested. So we'll have more details on that. Um, possibly by Friday, because we're going to also on our members webinar tomorrow, get a pulse for the members that are on that and kind of see like how they feel. And then what I'll do is I'll put together some tentative information uh, with, you know, the dates, location, you know, best place for the hotels. We're right in between two uh, airports, almost like exact same amount of time. So depending on what's cheaper for you, you know, that kind of stuff. And just to let you know, it's going to be at my school. Yep. Next to my house. Yep. We might do a barbecue or something. We don't know yet. We're going to figure that all out. But we will provide food one way or another, whether we decide to, maybe one night we'll And have maybe a I'll even cook. I'm a good, good cook. On the grill, at on least. On the grill. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You cook on the grill, I'll, I'll come up with other stuff. I, I'm we'll a good, it. good fish. Good, good you fish. You guys like fish? My trout with my uh, jack sauce? <gasps> Spice is nice. Especially with rice. <laughs> Especially with rice. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, um, we'll have more information. We're just kind of getting an idea if if you guys are ready to travel and do a seminar. <laughs> yeah, she's a musician. As soon as I saw them, I uh, deleted them out. Um, I was hoping that Sifu Larry was also helping to to man the chat a little bit because I, you know, read from the top. Yeah, because I'm over here being a sound audio person, man. Do you want a hug? Maybe a cookie? I want, I want a donut. <laughs> you want a donut. He always wants a donut. All right, so we answered that. We got Akbar taken care of. Matthew has a question. Matthew says, how many forms are there in your branch of Wing Chun? We'll answer that first, and then we'll go to the second question. Five. Five. You want to tell we have the footwork form, Selim Tao, Advanced Selim Tao, Chum Kyo, Phil G. Not including weapons. If you include weapons, you got the single sword, the double sword, and the dragon pole. And we also have all the Jong forms. And too. the Jong forms, yes. And then mm -hmm. Chi Gurk. So if you want to count everything specifically, like I didn't count the weapons, I was just counting empty hand forms. Um, there would be 10 altogether, including the weapons. 
Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So lots to do. Lots of stuff in there. So the next question was, how do you stay calm during a heated confrontation slash fight? Okay, here's the thing. Um, some people can't stay calm. Uh, they get nervous. They get, and it's natural. By the way, it's natural. It's your body preparing to fight or flight type of thing. But if you know you have to fight, the goal is to channel that energy into what you got to do. And for the most part, anytime you get into a fight, I've, I've gotten into fights in the past. Um, that it's just it's just for that few seconds. Once you engage, it's gone. That 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 emotion's gone. You're just gonna do your instinct and just go do what you got to do. Okay. So it's just that mental psych that you got. If it builds up. It's just like, oh my gosh, it's the fear of the unknown. That, that, that's what it is. Because if someone who's going to fight you and it's a three-year-old kid threatening to fight you, you wouldn't be scared. You'd be like, look, kid, you got to calm down because you don't think he can hurt you. It's that unknown that's factor that you aren't sure of. If it was a guy you knew exactly how he's going to punch you exactly every time, then you, you'd have no worry because you know how to counter. It's, 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 it's just something that's, that, that you have that you're scared of what you don't know. That's, that's one of the fears we have, right? So um, experience. Confidence in what you're doing, confidence in knowing who your opponent is, these are all factors, okay? Um, but me, like when I go in the fight, like I've, in my, not, not when, I, when I had gotten into a fight, I mentally am prepared first, you know? I take my position, like I said, I step back, I, I mentally beat them first. I put my hands up like this, look, I don't want any problems. I sit back, I make their minds feel like they have the advantage when I'm setting myself up for everything else to get the attack. So, you know, I always say beat them mentally first, then beat them physically second. Uh, you know, the, the most important what you have is your brain first. And then you can, you know, your mind can get someone to get into a fight or talk them out of one. You know, Bruce Lee always said, my art is the art of fighting without fighting because he would beat them mentally. You know, he did that in, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Enter the Dragon. No, no, no. What's the one with the levels? That was Enter the Dragon, Game right? Of death. Game of death. You know, he was on the boat. One guy wanted to fight him and he said, not here on that island. And he said, oh, we'll take the boat. Dragon. The end of the dragon? Man, well, it's been so long. On, How old are you? Uh, I'm old enough to be your younger brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, he said, no, we don't fight on the boat. It's too small. We'll fight on that island. And basically, he said, okay. And he got the guy on the boat, you know, and he said, made it look like he was going to get on the boat. And he let the boat go away, uh, the little boat, you know, go in. And he held him on with the rope. And he said, if you try to swim here, I'm going to let go of the boat. And, you know, he beat them mentally first. And, and that's the thing. You want to beat them mentally first. If you can beat them mentally first, you, you'll have that uh, advantage. I'm not saying you will win because you could beat bad and he could be a really good skilled fighter or he could be very strong and you're a very bad fighter but the idea is you got to mentally beat him first be prepared and then you'll be more confident by the way like i said i set myself up i'm, I'm always you know my mindset ready to attack i show the surrender sign i show like i'm not wanting to fight but i'm set to fight so i have the element of surprise uh i have the element of of, of that uh, positioning to get my body ready to attack. So th those are the things, like I said, experience is one of the biggest things, you know, and confidence is the other. You know, there are a lot of confident people, but confidence does not mean that you win. Just remember that. Confidence is just your belief in yourself, but it does not mean that you are good. It just, you can have false confidence. So experience is the one that, that you have. And again, every fighter, you know, you see like MMA fighters, obviously they're all gonna have a little bit of nervousness because they can feel they can lose and you got everybody watching. So there's always that little bit of nervousness. But once that engage occurs, and I've listened to a lot of people talk in fights and everything, like once they engage, the nervousness is over, their instincts take over. So you mentally have to win first and then let your instincts take over and then do that. The fights that I've been in, I, I get my mind set first and then my instinct kicks in. Like I said, when the guy came after, I kicked him. I went for the attack, I watched, I waited for the signs, and I kicked them, and the gut dropped them right on the floor. I, and that, that was over, the, the fight was over. When I was uh, in school, some people attacked me, you know, I, I saw it coming, I, the, the, uh, you know, the threat, the violence, I uh, started coming in, and, and, and I set myself up, ready, and when it was, boom, 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 it was over. It was, it was, I was hit someone, it was on the floor. Um, so that's so, just partially true, Sifu. Yes. So Sifu's partially speaking truth. <laughs> Because he, he, well, he's just... He's, it's because that's, I ended in one hit. <laughs> he, well, he's, he's oblivious to himself. I know people who've tried to beat him up while he was teaching them. He just doesn't, we just, we just get hurt. Like, he th we don't take it easy on Sifu Fu. We try to get him. And a lot of us tried and got hurt really bad and went, all right, we're good. Right. <laughs> we don't need to, yeah. we don't need to try. But he, I, I always go back to, man, he was frustrated. This is many, many years ago. I was getting so frustrated, man. He was, 
I was like, this disrespectful, slanty eye, no good, <laughs> filthy. He's got Don't a forget fat, yellow skin. Yellow skin. He had a ferret on his shoulder. Wonton eaten. Wonton eaten. <laughs> Fried chicken lover. He had, he had a ferret on his shoulder. He was on the phone in the other hand. He was playing hands with me and he's sucking his teeth at me. And I'm not, I'm try, at this point, I'm trying to hit the guy. And he just was totally ignoring me. And, and so, you know, I don't think he knows who's been trying to beat him up, to be honest with you. <laughs> And it's not because I think I'm not good. I just think they're that bad. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, that is funny. So uh, Shazan has a question. Shazan says, can you break down the spelling Thai Chi T-A-I space C-H-I versus T-A-I-J-I? Yeah. Thai Chi and Thai Chi. It, it's uh, the it, same it, thing. It, it, it's, it's, it's just how you say it, Mandarin versus Cantonese. It's just how it's spelled, like Win Chun, Vin Sun. You yeah. know, there are, there are practical differences in, in the style of it. But the principle of Wing Chun is yeah, still the same. It's still the same. And so I actually looked it up because um, yeah, I thought the same thing that what you're saying. But so what it is is uh, Tai Chi with the C-H-I was kind of the OG one uh, with the Wade Giles system. And then with the J, it was later on with the Hen Yu Pinion system. So with the C-H-I, it's just the OG version of it and stuff like that. And it was just changed. It's just the, how those particular systems decided to transliterate those words into English. Uh, which one is right or not right? They're, they're neither of them, but we personally use the CHI. Your goal is to find out really, uh, you know, when any art it is, you gotta find what's right for you yeah. and what works for you. That, that's the goal of any style, okay? Spelling is nothing. Saying what it is, it, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. it's, that's why we're never focused on styles or anything. We focus on the energy. That's what we're all about. I don't care if you say I'm Win Chun lineage from Mu Yat or from Yip Man or, or from any. It doesn't matter. It's like at the end of the day, is your energy right with it? Because if it's not right, you're gonna collapse. That's why I I, I sparred against a lot of Win Chun guys. And the one thing I let them do is like I let them hit me. I was like, look, just hit me as hard as you can. And I show them like your power is nothing. It doesn't do enough to stop someone. And if you can't do that, I don't care. That's why MMA guys don't fear these guys because it's not enough to do the damage. And you have to train yourself to, to, to get the energy out. I don't care how many blocks you can make. I don't care how many deflections you can do. I don't care if you can cheese out on one foot while eating a hot dog. It, it doesn't make a difference if you can't hurt them at the end of the day. Your goal is to be able to do the damage. And this is why MMA guys can beat Win Chun guys, because they can do the damage and hurt them. It's all about creating the damage. And I've seen Win Chun guys hit. It's not that they can't hit their opponent. Uh, that's not ever a question. I've seen a guy hit uh, an MMA guy like eight times. You know, straight. The guy didn't get hurt. He he's actually wasn't even afraid of it. He's like, go ahead, hit me again. I don't care. Because all those fast punches without the ability to do the damage is useless. It's useless. This is why guns are so effective, right? Because it's it's the equalizer, they call it, because you can do the damage. <laughs> you know? 45, you, know, you don't want to get hit by that. That thing's going to drop you dead because it can do the damage. But if the guy could not aim right, right, and he misses every time, then he's not going to do the damage. It's all about creating the damage. I don't care, like I said, that's why we don't focus on Wing Chun being the best or boxing being the best or Tai Chi being the best. It's not about that because you can find a great master of any art and find a guy who's eh, all right, and he can do the damage, he's going to win. You can get a master who can't do damage, it's not going to do anything. At the end of the day, it break up, breaks it down to two things. What you can give versus what you can take. That's what it comes down to. Okay, you're not gonna harm Superman unless you have magic or kryptonite. Okay, if you're physically trying to hit this guy, it's not gonna hurt. I don't care what your style is, it's not gonna do any damage to him. All right, and then imagine if Superman hits you, like he'll, he'll put you through 10 brick walls behind you. So it's all about, at the end of the day, when you break it down to that, it's about doing the damage versus taking the damage. That's what it comes down to, those two things, okay? Boxing is an offensive style, right? It's, it's doing a lot of damage. This is why it can hurt you, because if you get hit by it, you can drop to the floor and, 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 and hurt. You know, have you ever seen Yip Man too? You see that boxer in the end? He was hitting those Chinese guys, just dropped it with one hit because he was able to do the damage. But if you see these guys in the fighting other Chinese guys, you can see they're hitting with power, they get hit not backwards, but they can continue to fight. Yip Man had to break that guy down. You know, he started weapon striking his limbs and started doing small point striking. That's how he beat him in the end. He started weapon striking, small points, and then he hit his fingers to his temple, which real Ooh. shocked him. Those big, large hits, he could take those big hits. That's why he focused it small to create more pinpoint damage. And then he was able to beat him through that. So um, at the end of the day, you're training to generate power. I don't care what style it is. 
Uh, it's about being do, uh, being able to create that power, even when you intercept their arms. If you're waiting for them to hit something, you don't create the damage, they're going to continue to fight you, right? Three things stops the guy from attacking you. Knock him out, lock him out, and they get what they want. If you're not going to lock him out or you're not going to give him what he wants, like if he wants to kill you, then obviously we don't want that. Yeah. Um, so you got to do the striking, right, if you're not locking him out. So you, is the strike enough to do damage? If it's not enough to do damage, that's why the greatest martial arts at five years old is not going to beat a 25 year old guy i don't care how technical he is he can't generate the power his bones not strong enough okay he doesn't have enough mass and i don't care how perfect his time is the only way i can see him beating you is he stabs his finger in your eye, eye sockets and make you blind so you can't see and then try to choke you out but he cannot generate enough damage in terms of a fist strike to your body he just can't they're too young, they're too small, they won't generate enough speed, they don't have enough mass, the bones aren't dense enough, uh, they don't have enough thickness uh, uh, in their bones to stop from uh, intercepting points. This is why. But uh, when we're all adults, our bones are generally thick enough, our bones are solid enough. A guy who's like, you know, 16 year old kid who's developed enough can beat a 25 year old kid because his bones are strong enough. He can generate enough mass now. He can generate enough speed behind his strikes. So that's really what you want to do at the end of the day create that power. I don't care what style it is. And the spelling you got to learn how to generate that power. It doesn't matter. But if you're wondering why we use uh, the old version of Tai Chi as far as the transliteration and we use the new version of the Qigong, uh, the article I pulled up kind of actually says it perfectly. If, if you've heard of World Tai Chi Day, they spell it T-A-I space C-H-I. It's one of the most recognized ones. But for some reason, Qigong is the, the newer version of Qigong, which is Q-I-G-O-N-G. -G. And that's what we use on our site, mainly because they're the two most common versions of those, and they get the most amount of traffic. So there's no like secret thing behind it. Not one's greater or better than the other. It's just a different way of it being translated, and that's it. So uh, use what one resonates with you, and it's all good. <laughs> but, the mic but, is off or your battery died. They can't hear you. My battery was off. Sorry about that. So what I was saying is um, it doesn't matter which one you use because it, like if you look at like some of the more popular events and stuff based on Tai Chi and Qigong, you have like, for instance, the World Tai Chi, they do it T-A-I space C-H-I. And then for like Qigong Day, it's Q-I-G-O-N-G. So, and you'll see on our site, we use those two forms. So we have the, the older version for Tai Chi, the newer version for Qigong, and that's only because those are the two mostly used terms for those. And so more people find our stuff because we use those terms Better for way. traffic. Better for traffic. So if you're not worried about website traffic, then you use whatever one feels right to you. But they're both right. They're just different ways of saying the same thing. Hey, that's CJ, all. remind me tomorrow. Yes. Um, to give you the link for the apparatus device that we need to hook up to the other computer so that we can hook up Zoom so that you can use reference stuff from Zoom when we're doing these lives just in general because it'll, you know, be cooler. I'm a slacker. I, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I will do my best to remember just remind me. the thing that I need to... Just say, I gotta remind you for what you asked me to remind you. Bring and up stuff. Like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> that was a very general... <laughs> You know that doohickey thing, you know, the thingamajig? Yeah, that thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Abe Sylvia says, any tips on how to deal with someone shooting in, a.k.a. a bum rush? Oh, yeah. Should I show that? It's up to you. He is a member. We can show it tomorrow. I will let you use your discretion if you want to do a quick version or not. Everybody really wants to see you get hurt, CJ. That's why they come on, so you can get hurt. It's, it's part of the draw. I, I get her way more in the members one. Though last week, y'all, <laughs> it was a very chill members uh, webinar. I was like, was a little taken back. Like, I was like, wow, I didn't like, get really beat up. Thank goodness for that break. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that, that was nice. That still healing. I was, I was so expecting to get like thrown on the floor a couple times and it didn't happen, so. Didn't yeah, I nice. take a move? Wait, we did the hip, was that the one before? That, that was the one before, the yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a pretty chill one. All right, I'm just explaining the principles, okay? Uh, when bum rushing, the neck is one of the best things you want to attack along, okay? Because if they can't get their head around you um, and their arms can't close, then they can't take you down, okay? Um, so our goal is to get the neck, okay? You know, I received my big fat Greek wedding. You know, man is the head, the woman's the neck, and she can, turns it wherever she wants to from time to time. That's the key. You want to control the neck because that, that way you can control the head, okay? So it's like, um, for me, one quick and easy way, close up tight. 
A lot of people try to sprawl and get away, which I'm not saying it doesn't work because it does work. Okay, uh, this is a situation where you can't sprawl. You didn't sprawl in time. Let's just say that, or you got caught by surprise. Okay, uh, for me, I think this is much uh, more effective because it puts you on the attack. Sprawling is defensive. It gets you so you don't get taken. This is where you're going to do damage to them. The techniques I use, because again, I use offensive or counteroffensive techniques. I don't try to use defensive techniques. Um, and there's nothing wrong with stepping backwards to the side as long as you have the intent to create the hit. Okay. Um, that just get that in your head. Um, so the key of any bum rush, okay, a basic simple principle is if she's coming at you, right, we want to put one one hand should always your hands first off should always be tight. You don't want to bring your hands out. Like if they're like you don't want to bring your hands out because they're controlling your hips, your body, and they're gonna break this the legs and break your core and then you're gonna go down because of that. Me, I always keep my hands tight. If I see somebody bum rush, I actually keep my hands very, very tight because I want that to be the center. So it's easy for the hand just to go inside to this. So that way, grab me, grab me. Like every time, see, it's, it's always gonna be where she's gotta go around my arms, okay? That's, that's, that's one of the things you wanna do. And the reason why is like, uh, let's do it this way. I want okay. you to grab me if you can. Like wrap your hands and okay. take me if you can. Like wrap your hands and no. take me, okay? So you see how her arm is locked here? She can't no. close, do it again. And take like take so now she, you can see how she can grab her hands and seal that okay uh, so we want to make sure that the hand stays in and the reason why because I want the arm to intercept the arm so that way she cannot seal that arm so if she's trying to bum rush me she cannot seal that arm can you wrap the arm no. so that cannot come in and no yeah. matter how strong you're putting it along their ribs yeah. their back so the harder they're doing it, the harder they're pressing into their body that's the first thing okay the other side the forearm okay it's so actually she's, She's coming in. I want to sink, and I actually Ooh, want to strike that dang. along the neck. Uh, the reason why is because if I stop the neck from coming, then she can't close her body into mine. I can't mine. move my neck tomorrow. I'm a mom of why, y'all, okay? <laughs> and, and, and so we want to do that. So, again, I don't go defensive. I go counteroffensive. So when they're coming in, you know, I teach this, and Ooh. I get into the neck. And then I go for the, uh, from here, then I go in for the choke, <sighs> and then I make them tap. Um, but I actually taught a student that he got jumped by four guys who used that technique and, and I told him how to control someone once you see them because he can't keep pushing you. If you get along the neck, any pressure he puts on you will actually make their neck go up higher and choke them faster. Uh, and I taught my student this, he had four guys jump him, he oh, did man. the technique I taught him and I taught him how to control it and he couldn't, the other three guys could not get couldn't in. Couldn't get to him, yeah. Because he, he controlled them so I'm not going to. Basically uh, like using like a shield. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to teach how to do it, but if she's coming in on the bottom, she go like so it doesn't okay. hurt. But once I get into this here, and I go like this here, <gasps> if someone was coming, let's say, from here, <clears throat> I'll easily move them. Oh, I can easily, I and hate, this is me not I trying to hurt I would hate to be that guy. I'd be like, y'all, stop yeah, trying yeah. to attack him. Yeah. Leave me alone. My, my student <laughs> did that. He had the strike on him, too. He <laughs> hurt him. He cut his eye. He made him choke. Yeah, I And he was that. throwing him <laughs> left and right, and the other guys just kind of stepped backwards. I like because they didn't know what to do. They, the guy tried to come in and he, he threw the guy in between. Right. And, uh, right, and then he started punching him too. So that guy's choking. And then he started hitting him, showing like he, he can do the damage. And the guy was like, okay, okay, I, I don't want to be the guy next. And it ended the attack. Wow. So a bum rush wow. is always for us. Our, our principle is not defensive, counter offensive. It's fast, it's easy, puts you in control, and it does the damage, especially if you have to do multiple people. Um, so we get into that, hit the neck, and use the elbow to hit into the neck. It's very painful, by the way. It's just, not fun. <laughs> just think just of kidding. a baseball bat with like a three-inch spike, mm -hmm. and then imagine someone hitting you as hard as they can right. with that spike pointing your neck. No. That's what it's going to be like, and it stops people. But you got to make sure that you're not leaning, uh, and I'm not going to teach us stuff but you don't want to be leaning if you are you're not rooted you got to find your root in your movements a lot of people will lean because they're trying to get the person away i don't get them away i want to bite them in okay the principle of tai chi uh, says to invite them in and score them out so my job is not to go and try to get them away from me my job is let them to come in and strike and get in on that and you see my mass my body it's, it's going forward it's, it's putting it into them so a lot of people who strike and they, they go like this, and their posture is more defensive. So they can break in mm. because they're not doing the damage. They're trying to push them off. If she's coming at me and I'm going like this, I'm actually just trying, and she can knock me backwards. And if she, especially if she's coming at me like a like 250 pound person and they're coming at me with like, you know, 100 miles an hour. Right. Uh, when, when, when you're doing it the other way, when she comes in, I go like this. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, she's not going to want to come through that. 
Who's going to want to keep going with a, no. like a, like a baseball bat with a, a you know, two, three-inch nail <laughs> coming in your neck? Like, how far do you want to keep going? Like, you're going you're to stop. It's going to shut them down. I've demonstrated it with wrestlers. With jiu -jitsu. I told them, just take me down. Sifu Larry did the same thing, too. Um, and, I, and they can't get in. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a sheer impossibility and there's, unless they can counter the points. Right. Okay? That's countering. That's not strength. That's not size. That's, that's a skill and technique. Yeah, but if you land if they don't know that neck, coming, right? Yeah, they don't know that's coming. You just go like this and you strike. That's, that's, that stops them dead on the tracks. I've had people try to bum rush me. I've had in, in the streets. I had, and I've done this technique and it stopped. It's never failed me. Never failed me. It just shuts them down. Okay? It's like getting shot in the chest. It just shuts you down. <laughs> it just ends you. Man. Y'all, <laughs> um, ouch, that didn't feel good. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Bob says, invite them in and escort them out. Yes. Ed, yes. were you not listening? I said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a Tai Chi term. Invite them in and escort them out. Ivan is coming in from Chile. Welcome. He said, thank, uh, he told me, said, thank you. Definitely would like one more in-depth tomorrow. CJ Jamie, you're still the champ. Yeah, um, y'all, that did not feel good. So as long as I can move my neck tomorrow, we'll definitely do that. <laughs> I'll break down the science in it. I'll let you know, because, ow, a couple of those were really not fun. <laughs> That's all, like, literally, I could feel my brain kind of, like, you know, shake and stuff. That, that was not good. Um, <laughs> hey, Tommy Marks, I have no idea what you're referring to. You said fundamental poor body mechanics. Is that a question? Is that a statement? If it's a statement, what's in regards to? If it's a question, what is it in regards to? Help us help you, bro. Uh, let, it, let us know on that and we will follow up. Shazan wants pizza. <laughs> okay. I can do it with pizza. Um, cool. <laughs> Hopefully you can get some pizza. Pam, oh my goodness. Pam says, I'm so happy I got here live. I'm so happy you're on live and I hope you can join us tomorrow on one of the members only Zoom webinars because those are like 10 times more fun, girl. So I hope to see you Not on and I hope you're doing good. Not really for me, but for you guys, definitely more fun. I actually enjoy them too because I get to do a lot of training. So, you know, my pain is also my learning. So it's all good. We don't train defense. <laughs> no defense. <laughs> yeah, no defense. No defense and self-defense is also a dirty word, though we have used it a couple times in blog posts because unfortunately most people when they're looking how to fight, they're looking for self-defense. Don't use the but D we, word in here. But we don't like it. It's not, it's, a, it's like an ugly word. <laughs> uh, okay, we got that one. We took care. Uh, Shazan says, question, if I were in New Jersey and wanted lessons, can I choose the exact styles I want to learn? Absolutely, yes. Just know that you may want to learn X, Y, and Z in the style. If we see that your balance is off and you can barely do X, Y, and Z, we're gonna like go back a little bit to the basics, make some corrections, and then move on. Because we have people like, oh, I really want to do da da da, and then they come in and they can't punch and they can't stand straight, and then we got to work on the basics. It, it, look, so. it's very simple. You can learn whatever you want as long as you do as we tell you to. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. So yeah, we, we can work on if you're like, these are the specific styles that I want to work on. We're going to definitely work on those with you, but we might have to go back to some fundamental stuff and make some corrections because we want you to leave your best. You know, we don't want to go, oh, let's not fix those things and let them keep doing things wrong. We want you to get it right. So you can be amazing at what you do. Guy says, hi, Sifu. I saw your jut against a round punch and practiced it, focusing the energy in the wrist. Then I tested it with someone with a black belt in karate and jiu-jitsu, and he couldn't stand the pain. Yeah, you did it right. Congratulations, brother. We miss you too, Pam. Yes, we do. Yeah. Who's Pam? Oh, come on. Just Stop. Kidding. I just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I gave her a shout-out. I told her I hope to see her on uh, the next uh, members webinar. All right, we got that one. Tracy, pain is your friend. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> Angel always says her constitution stat is maxed out. Thank you. Uh, I think, maybe. Uh, Brian says, I love your wooden man videos. Just starting to train on my own. Awesome, Brian. Um, I don't think you're a member to Inner Shellin. The name doesn't look familiar. Forgive me if you are. But uh, if you like the stuff that we have here on YouTube, definitely go check out our website because we have all the sets broken down in detail for the Jong and so much more. Uh, you can go to innershellin.com forward slash join and check it out at your leisure. Shazan says, Jamie uh, must have max defense 
after training with y'all. <laughs> we don't do defense. <laughs> well, like Max, deliver some pain. <laughs> All right, Pam says, yes, I'm going to try to get on tomorrow, too. I've missed being here. Well, we've missed you, girl. I hope you're doing okay. I know you've been busy. I, I saw, I'm not on Facebook much, but I know, like, I saw a couple, like, of your uh, webinars that you were doing for your business and stuff. So I thought that was really cool. I hope you're doing well, and I look forward to catching up with you. Ed's cracking up. Bob's cracking up. All right, let's see if we have any other yeah, questions. Yeah, there's questions you missed on the top. Yeah, I know, because it's kind of jumping around. I don't know, this pool thing is in my way. Bob says, I catch myself not breathing like I should, especially when learning a new move or under pressure. Any tips? Oh, that's a good question. It, it, it's common. Um, the reason why you do that is because you're, you're using strength. And, you know, when you push, you hold your breath to create pressure. Okay? Uh, that means that you're using strength to make up for what you're lacking your skills. So you got to focus on the technique more. Um, you know, uh, you got to learn how to draw the energy in your wrist for one thing. You know, we got to get in your wrist in the end. If you're doing any type of locks or any type of strikes, any type of interception, you got to have your base, you got to have your drive, you got to have your torque. You need to get all three to make it work effectively. That's why we say three proof is foolproof. I like to say there's no such thing as two proof Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, you can do two proof and it'll work. All right? It has to be three proof all the time. So uh, you got to get the base out, you got to get the drive, you got to get the torque. Uh, this is how you got to do things. Uh, when I lock, when I strike, when I intercept and, and to counter striking, it is always through the three proof. Okay, we muscle out when we lack out the skill. I always like to say when you lack in skill, you make up in strength. So when you'd like, it's because your technique's off. Okay, it's it because of that. I, I can lock people out, I can strike people, um, I can do all this stuff, and I learn to breathe, right? Uh, like I said, we, we, we push for, for more strength. That's why you ever lift weights? People are screaming. They're holding that pressure. And the reason why you do that, because um, the science in it is because air has a density, it can be compressed. We push because we're pushing the air and we're compressing it, and that air is pushing back, and that's what gives us that force. You know, try inhale. And when you do that, you feel like you can't get the pressure. You push and hold, you get the pressure. And that's why you do that. Just, just a little bit of science for you. Um, so uh, you have to find the technique in your wrist in the end if you're doing any strikes, if you're doing any locks. For us, it always gets to the wrist in the end. I always tell people, like, you got to imagine your arm like an escalator. It's, no matter what happens, the pressure's always going to the wrist. If I intercept the arm, the pressure's going to the wrist. If I'm locking, the pressure goes to the wrist. I always send it to the wrist in the end. So that's, that's what you got to keep in mind, okay? So if you are holding your breath a lot, pushing, it's because you're using force to compensate for what mm. you can't do in your skills. Yep. Matthew said, so do you teach all the Wing Chun forms online? Uh, everything except for the weapons, but we will be teaching those, and we didn't do the advanced um, Sun so Tao yet. The, but everything else is on there, so there's tons of training on there, and that is something uh, we had planned on doing several years ago, but the pandemic stuff happened, and it's just been kind of chaos what ever pandemic? since well pandemic pandemic where you want to call that thing uh so uh so yeah fakeness right <laughs> guys we are treading on water we don't we care are no treading more on come on water. YouTube, cancel i didn't me. mention any names i didn't mention any <laughs> parties i just stated facts at this point, I don't even care anymore. They don't pay me enough to care. So, on <laughs> YouTube, goodness gracious. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we do have everything on there, and we w we are constantly adding more stuff. Uh, we're kind of having to rearrange our schedules and stuff like that to get back to filming uh, because we did get hit, you know, hard with our business and stuff the past couple of years. So we've been having to do other stuff to make ends meet. Um, so until we can get fully back on track. We're mainly just doing these uh, webinars uh, for everyone in the public. And then we have our members only webinars on Thursday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that is, you know, what we're doing right now. But we are going to start filming again soon to start adding more content. But currently speaking on Entershelling.com, <coughs> like if you actually studied what's there, there's a good 10 to 15 years worth of training there. So there's lots to do in the meantime. I know, man. If inflation goes up, it keeps going up. If rent gets to be $95, we may not be doing anything on Enter Tai Chi and Enter Shell anymore. So that's like a lot of money, right? Like, I'm just saying. All right, I'm done talking. Yo, man, don't make me cry. Okay, so. Oh, <laughs> interest inflation, dude. What if right now? Did I tell you I love President Biden? To fill my, to fill my tank. 
Did I tell you I love oh, President Biden God. and Kamala Harris? They are the best. Don't talk about them. Oh, Lord. I said they're the best. I'm thinking they're the best. Goodness. All right. Um, Cheats Out Musician says, have you ever learned the Wing Chun darts? Apparently they were only preserved in some lineages. Oh, good question. No, I never heard of it. Uh, I've watched a lot of uh, Wing Chun. I've seen a lot of teachers. I I've never heard it myself. Uh, if, if it was, let's just say this. I don't know if Yip Man taught it. It could be from outside that, but it, on, on, and all of Yip Man's students, I don't think anyone has had it. Yeah, say, I don't I've think heard I've heard it. So it could be from an off branch of Wing Chun. But um, I, I, I don't, I've never heard it myself, and uh, you know, I, I've never seen it. I don't know what it is, uh, unless they're talking about you know stabbing with the fingers. But that's part of Bill G. So they're saying, oh, it's something above that. It's a, I don't care. At the end of the day, I generate the power to do the damage. Whether I do it with a finger or they do it with my fist, if it takes them down, I don't care. That's why I tell my students, it doesn't matter if you can do it in three moves versus four moves. If you took them down in a fight and you're safe and you're not harmed, that's fine. You'll just get better as time gets better. So you'll learn to go from four to two. That's fine. But in that time where you have to handle yourself and you do what you did right, whether you, you're like, I could have struck it with my fist, but I did it with my elbow. Hey, it worked, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You survived. You didn't get hurt. They did. You ended the fight. You use your wits first. You use your skills second. That's fine. Oh, they're talking about the rope darts. You know, I oh rope darts. I was gonna say I've, I haven't really seen it in Wing Chun. I even did like a search on it and stuff like that, and I see a couple of people mentioning it, but no one's like saying like who, what, why, where, like what style is is promoting this. I've seen this more in Wushu. Yes. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that some people in Wing Chun. But I think like as far as like where it probably came from, it's definitely more of a Wushu thing. Um, but if anyone knows what style teaches that, I'd be interested in, in learning about that. Anyone can claim anything from anything. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. It, it, to yeah. me, it's about, is, is it, it right? Is there energy right? right. Is, you know, yeah. like, I don't care. <laughs> right. Is, is there <laughs> proper energy? Is it, is, is it enough to do the damage? Is, is, is it uh, energy efficient? You know, all that stuff. Like, I don't care. If you add it to Wing Chun, if you took it away from Wing Chun, Mon supposedly took away some Wing Chun. He thought, didn't think it was effective enough. So he took some things away. Martial arts is about training what's best for you within the principle of the styles that you learn, right? That's what it is. You can add, you can take away. Bruce Lee did the same thing. He took away things that he thought wasn't useful. He added things that he thought was useful. At the end of the day, it's your martial arts. That's why you have, and uh, we talked about that. Yip Man had all these students, and yet you can see there's variations of differences of Song Tao. So either, I always said, like, either he's one of two things. He was very, very smart and understood that every student had a certain way they moved and they felt comfortable in it, as long as it stayed within the principal right, and it's good. Uh, or he was very crazy and said, no, no, I didn't teach this way to this student. No, no, I didn't do that. So he could be crazy and taught, like, like, you know, different ways. Or he was very good and said, listen, if that works for you, I see the principal still good. Like this guy likes to do, or girl for her, uh, five and five. The other person likes to do nine and one. The other person does eight and two. Like who cares? He knows that it equals ten. I don't care if you go uh, seven and three. Uh, obviously, it's not six and nine, right? As long as you pick whatever comment is that follows that principle and it does what it's supposed to do, then that's fine. Yeah. That's why we don't argue styles or, or it has to be this way. I teach right, students who learn different it? Tai Chi or learn yeah. the different Wing Chun. I don't say, listen, the form isn't like that. You have to do it like this. I, I take their form and I say, listen, your energy's off in this when you do this. Okay? So if they're packing a certain way, I say, that's fine. Here's the energy. Let's see how it works. I test it. I show them that they're doing, they're doing it wrong because they're not turning the wrist or the thrown from the shoulder of the hand. I say, you got to base it. You got to drive it. You got to torque it. You got to do that. So I break the principles down. I don't care about the style, the formation of the, the form. Uh, I don't care whether you did... Uh, um, you know, uh, brush left knee to brush right knee to brush left knee as opposed to going brush left knee to step up like guitar, twist up into a uh, single whip. I don't care the order. That, that, that's irrelevant to me. It's The question is, is, is the principle of energy right in the movement and the transition right? Are you doing the principles right? Are you executing the energy going out to your wrist in the end? Are you finding your root? All this stuff. That's what matters to me at the end of the day. All the other stuff doesn't matter. If you're a boxer, I don't go, well, you know what? You're not martial arts, so you're ineffective. No, boxers are good. I taught boxers how to hit harder doing the three-proof technique. I taught them how to recover so that when they hit, they're not spending and wasting as much energy. They, they te I teach them how to recover. So it's uh, it's nothing about your style, okay? Who cares what it, words are? Who cares what you add? Who cares mm -hmm. what you take away? I don't care. What matters is whatever you're doing, is are you doing it right with the energy? That's what it matters. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Uh, Keshava says, I want Tai Chi dress. I, by the way, Keshava, I don't know if you've seen it. I just put in the chat on uh, YouTube our link to our Amazon store. It's entershellen.com forward slash Amazon. If you decide to get something from there, that is all affiliate links uh, that will give us a small little commission and help us to keep doing what we're doing. So thank you in advance. And if anyone does shop on Amazon, please use our link. It doesn't matter if you're buying something, uh, you know, that's on our recommended list or something completely different. Um, we still will get a small commission if it's something that is able to get a small commission on it. So for those of you that shop on Amazon, please help support us. Thank you in advance. Much appreciated. Um, oh, Errol. by the way, news. Yes. Um, I just got it. Um, the Supreme Court, basically, the Congress uh, agreed. Now um, there's no going to be uh, daylight saving times. We're staying the way we are. Are you serious? Yep. When I did, when was this? Like in the past, like couple of days? Yep. Because they just, I, dude. I was so mad. I was literally. My daughter's like, Mom, why is it dark again? You know, at the bus stop, it was just starting to get light out and stuff. And I'm like, because these is. suckers Twitter. keep. Trying to Senate steal time. Senate unanimously passed a bill to make it. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Because, dude, two, two. No, no, no. You mean we had to endure that nonsense for all about those years? Now, four like, the switch. weeks out of the year. Man. Two in the fall, what? two now. It like uh, it's been, science has proven it messes up the bio rhythms. People are lethargic. People get more accidents and all kinds of crazy stuff, get sick more, because it's not natural for us to be having an hour stolen well, well, and given back. To be fair, it still, has to, it still has to go through the um, oh, it's not House Representatives and, and President Biden has to sign the bill. Great. It ain't going to happen now. It's probably not happening. <laughs> and you know how. It's, so, it ain't okay. going to happen now. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to pray that they do something right up in that place and, and get rid of that. But yes, unfortunately, we they stole an hour from us, so that's, that's why... You're a little bit late, Errol, but it's not your fault. It's our government's fault, and I apologize on behalf of all of us in the United States of America. We don't like it any more than you do. Actually, some places in the United States of America, they don't do daylight savings time. I think it's a little unfair. I think Israel does it. Um, we do it. Uh, does UK do it? I don't know the UK, but most countries don't do it. Because it's, it's stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. It's not right. Daylight it's unnatural. It's a, it's a scam. There's so many it scams. Is totally a scam. It's like getting a job. Getting a job is a scam. We're on YouTube, okay. man. Sandu says, greetings, Sifu, CJ and Sifu. Looking good, guys. Missed you. Missed you, too. And hope to see you on tomorrow, too, brother. Uh, guy says, how do you block high and medium high kicks? You don't block it. You strike it. Yeah. Okay. For a lot of times, if it's a medium, I tell people to sit down and, and sink into it and push their elbow forward. That way, if they're hitting, you want the strongest point of your arm, which is your form to the elbow, to hit them. You don't want to use your hands. You can break your wrist. You can break your fingers. Um, it's very dangerous to do that, especially if they're hard hitters. Um, you don't want to block up here because that's the thinnest part of your uh, forearm where the bone is thin. So, you know, and it's actually the, the, the most amount of leverage point that you can put on your joint, so it actually hurts you a lot. Uh, you really want to hit with your elbow to form right here from halfway down to the elbow. You don't want to hit here. Now, you can go up to three quarters, that's fine, but you really, really want to hit from that, that there. A lot of times people are, are trying to put their hands out. You don't want to do that. Um, if they're a hard hitter, you could jam your wrist and break your wrist. Uh, I'm not saying you will. I'm, just, I'm saying these are the possibilities. When you do it like this, there is the, no point of jamming your wrist at all. You're not, you're not going to feel that at all. And it hurts them. You're putting the densest part of your forearm into their bones or into their joint or into their muscle, depending on which way they're kicking. Um, it, it, it has the hardest point of surface area. And it has the best power that you can generate out. Uh, when you're intercepting them. Uh, if you do it from here, it's not the most powerful generation, especially mid-range to close range. Okay, that's why people extend to do that, because that's where you, you have the most power. But the problem is, is when you go further away, you lose control. When you're tighter, um, you don't have as much um, pressure to push, but you have much better control. But the good news is, is you're not using your hand, you're using your forearms, and they're made to fight close quarter. That's why you want to do that. Hands are not made to fight close quarter. That's why you instinctively do that. They're not made to. Here, like it's gonna crush you. Here, you'll crush them. So you want to use your, your base of the form. So a lot of times when people are doing it, you want to really push your base out. You know, it's which is the first thing. It's like uh, think of the foundation of any building. You gotta have that strong, otherwise the rest will collapse. So you want the base, the foundation out when you do that. And if you want, guy, I don't know if you can come on to the members uh, webinar tomorrow on Zoom. We can go in more depth on that if you would like and yeah, help you I'll, out. Yeah, I'll have her kick me and, and we'll I'm try to put a pad on her leg so that way. We're going to put a pad 
Yeah, yeah, because it'll hurt if I do it. It'll hurt a lot. Um, well, I haven't done any bone conditioning in a while. Just consider some some bonus, you know, bone conditioning because, you know, my, my partner in crime, Hersey, he hasn't been around in a while. Don't know if he's going to see this, but Hersey, come back, bro. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to start bone conditioning with these guys. And you know they hurt when you hit them. I don't want that. <laughs> Come on, bro. It is Come fun. on. It, it's fun to watch you guys try to hit us and oh, it hurts. hurt yourselves. Oh, God. It's not Back right. It's up. like like we're hitting steel poles or something. It's just not okay. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's see who else we have on. I'm going to try to go back here. I see just so much chatting going on. Let's see if I can find some more stuff. All right. Yeah, there is. There was two more. All right. Pain is your friend. Yes, we got that one. Uh, Brian says, what do you think about Iron Paul training? Uh, bought a mung bean bag and going to try it. Okay. So my friend, uh, his uncle was like a palm master, iron palm master. And the one thing, like he wouldn't teach anybody, but he, he was an iron palm master. He said, don't learn from anyone who, who is going to teach you if he can't do it himself. If he can't do it himself, then don't learn from him because he said there's a lot of nerves in the hand and if he's not trained properly to do it, then he will not be able to teach you to do it and you wind up hurting your hand. So if you do iron palm, make sure the teacher you're learning from or if you're self-learning, I would take it very easy. Whoever's teaching it, they should be able to demonstrate iron palm to you. Otherwise, don't bother to learn from them. He said the one thing is your hand has to have that proper medicine. You have to train a certain way to get the hands to become very powerful without damaging the hands. Okay, because you can have arthritis in the future. You can have susceptibility to, to just pressure where you can't squeeze your hand. Like holding a pencil will hurt. It'll feel like a lot of pain to you. So you don't want that. So I, I think Iron Palm is great, but you have to be properly trained to do it. And it can do a lot of damage. Again, the reason why it's so great is because it can do damage. It's all about creating the damage in the end. Yeah. That's why guns are so easy. You don't have to train so hard, but yet you can get a lot of damage out of it. You do have to train to aim right. You know, but apart from that, you don't have to be physically, uh, 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 have that physical ability to create that damage. You just have to aim. So, it's a skill. So add Toby. I could, in theory, take some hits, but let me, let me, let me explain this in, in, a, in a way that makes sense. Basically, all you people who are going to come to our, our webinars, we're training CJ Jamie to beat all of you up. And in order for her to beat all of you up, we have to beat the crap out of her. I gotta go through the paces. She, yeah, she, she doesn't get out of it. No, right? And I don't think that's any, true. In my personal stance is women, they, they need to, you gotta dish it out to them because I think it's unfair to them true. to treat them differently the way. Dude, Sifu slammed me on movie. my head. This floor, the floor in this school, if you go back to a lot of our videos um, when we first started Enter, Enter Shaolin, it's all about equal this floor is concrete. Sifu. It is a solid monolith pour concrete. And there's videos where Sifu lifts me up, slams me into the ground. That's He's true. slamming me into concrete. It's so true. we decided, and I, well, when I say we, I decided that CJ Jamie came all the way from like foreign lands to learn this <laughs> kung fu. Pretty so much, the yeah. only way that she can learn it Can't is. Can't deny her the journey. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to be, be the demo buddy of Sifu Fu? I mean, I wouldn't. But, but who wouldn't? <laughs> Well, you, you did it for so I many years, so you're long. like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I retired. Hey, Baron. Um, all I'm going to say is I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to have to agree to disagree on that. As far as these times are hard for everyone, it's because the governments of the world are creating that, not because it has to be. Well, so, I, I, I'm going to say this. It's the policies mm -hmm. and, and stuff that they do that can affect our economy. That's, that's what I'm saying. They're making it harder than it has to be, and that's just not okay. So yeah. if you support that, God bless you. Um, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on that just, one. Just that's look at the, the YouTube and all the stuff that they're doing in the policies, and you can see that is what's affecting us. I know they blame COVID. I know they blame uh, mm. Putin, but that's not it. The fact we is, need, is we actually need to, we need carry... to slow down this conversation. Remember, freedom Only... isn't free in, in, in well, this free country. Well, I know it's not free in this place. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, don't say don't don't do it. because don't of Smiden, Smiden, it's my friend, Smiden. <laughs> he actually made oh, some well, plans. He and just know that we only no, we import 4% of oil from Russia. There goes the 10 cents, yep. The Canadians actually was promising us 900,000 barrels a day coming from Canada, and that got shut down yeah, the by Smiden. Yeah. Okay? They said that if they had that up, they could have given us an additional 400,000. 
So we would have had 1.3 million barrels of oil yeah. from Canada, but that got shut down by Smiden. Okay, and I'm um, sorry that you had three people pass in your family. Um, we're not saying that it's not real, it's, but it is a man-made thing. What? COVID. I'm not saying that COVID's not real. No, no, uh, we're we, not saying that. We all had COVID. We uh, believe the so, COVID is real. But we're, we're saying that it didn't have to be released. It didn't have to be created, and all the things that have happened to everyone didn't have to happen. That's what I'm and, saying. And just understand, a lot of the data is false anyways. Just yeah, we won't even know. go into that. But, but go look up coronavirus losses. patent. Go look it up. It's patented, which means it's man-made. You cannot patent yeah. something that's man-made. And it was patented made. before it was released, so that's a whole Right, story. so we go look it up, and you'll see who owns it, okay? Uh, but it is man-made. Yep. It is not a natural occurrence, which they and did originally tell you. And it definitely not. did not act natural because we had it, and that that was not like anything I've ever experienced. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't wish it on my should We should really enemy. stop talking about this subject. I'm no. talking about Spiden. We're talking about, you know, it is and We're what not it is. talking about Look, the, the C word. Other can talk we're about talking it. About we're Joden. talking about it. We're just saying Joden. test and prove all things, people. Really do your research and, and do not get them from one thing. Yes. John says, Sifu, when your Tai Chi teacher taught you, you the yang style what did you do differently to make it your own in the end tai chi he, he sacrificed chickens what so basically the main difference what in the end tai chi is to a lot of other tai chi that we do uh that other people do not we as an enter shaolin but other people is we emphasize energy going to the wrist that's yep. one of the main main differences and that i've learned that that was necessary uh, tai Chi from the waist is okay, it's great, it's good, but it's like um, a great car driver in an average car. The potential's there, but he can't get it to go past right, a certain point because it, it was yeah. not maximized because the vehicle is not maximized. A waist is great, you've got to get in the wrist too, especially when you do combat, okay? Especially because wrist is your control. It's your ability to convert energy, it's ability to focus energy, it's ability to um, control the energy. So uh, that's what you have to have it in your wrist for. A lot of Tai Chi's use the hands like the tail end of the snake. It's, it's actually being drawn towards the elbow. We don't. We draw it to the wrist. Uh, so that's the biggest, biggest difference right. okay, that, that we do that makes the NDN Tai Chi different from other, other Tai Chi's. Um, I don't say the other Tai Chi's are bad. I would just say it's incomplete. Right. Um, it's just you're getting like... 50% of what Tai Chi can do for you if you don't you use a wrist. You get 100% of what Tai Chi can do for you right, so if you use your waist your and your wrist. Right. And that's the difference. Uh, I've learned that a lot of Tai Chi's is only 50%. They're not 100% because they don't use a wrist properly. Right. And they're like, oh yeah, you we use a wrist. It's the same thing as when Chang guy said, yeah, I turned my wrist. It's like, no, you use your arms and your wrist turns because of that. Right, a lot now, of people don't realize they're not really using We use the it, wrist yeah. and the arm is supporting that wrist to do it as opposed to following the arm where the wrist follows the arm. Like I said, the biggest way I can describe it is you're the tail end of the snake. You're not the head. This is the head of the snake. This is the tail end of the snake. See, you can see my arm lifting, the hands following. No, my arm is driving to the wrist so the wrist can lead it. And that's what biggest biggest differences and when I watch people do Tai Chi I always see it's the tail of the snake the tail of the snake it's got to be the head of the snake yeah okay so that, that if you want full maximum stuff so that that's what makes a difference uh, Ralph says Sifu uh, I learned a great deal in kicking and the module lessons great for training all over and kicking skills thank you you are very welcome Raph and we are so happy that you have been enjoying the kicking section uh, hey Silas good to see you on all right, Silas says, any good three-proof drills for the rattan rings? Uh, all of them are three-proof. Anytime you use your arms, you should always be doing three-proof, mm -hmm. okay? So, uh, there's never going to be a lesson where I say, and this one, <laughs> only one proof will work, and you don't need the other two. No. Right, so, uh, so I may break it down and say, you want to develop the first, so you can develop the thirds, the other two thirds, but it, it, I might do, do a drill it where it's just, right. yeah, it's just one. It's like putting one leg up on a tripod. <laughs> it's not going to work. Uh, you got to get it all three to make it work well. Uh, so all the rattan so, ring ones, all but, those are good. Like a, like a tripod, you can't drop all three legs at the same time, right? You draw one first, then you draw the other one, and then you draw the third. So it's the same idea. Develop the base first. Then you can develop your drive. Then you can develop your torque. And that's, that's in the Wing Chun section under the solo training module is where you will find um, all the rattan ring stuff. In case you didn't already know that, Silas, I'm not sure um, if you were just 
asking for something specific for that, but we're always using three proof. So everything you're doing, you're developing your three proof and you're utilizing that three proof. And we just got a new YouTube premium member, uh, Garuda One. Thank you so much for you joining. You're number one. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. Good to have you on. Let us know if you have any questions that we can cover before we wrap it up. All right. Ed, Ed had Ed. a question. Let's it was right Ed. before uh, John's uh, question. Right or maybe after, after. After, after. okay. Yeah. I can show it to you. Do you have it up? It is. Where are you, Oh, Ed? it just went up. Ah, I know, that's what keeps happening to me too. Let me see if I can find Ed. Let's Here see. it is. There we go. Ed says, Sifu, I believe you may have mentioned if uh, going for a punch in the chest to use a vertical punch, you mentioned not to rotate it to a straight punch. Could you discuss why not to rotate it? Okay, you can rotate it, okay? But you can't rotate where your shoulders are being activated where it comes up. It has to be where your base is still down. So if I were to punch, I can punch vertical, but I can rotate it inward because it keeps my base down. When you do it like this and you try to do this, you're rotating your elbow up, it's gonna draw away your base power. Now, if you started this way and you did this, that's fine. But you don't wanna be from a low base and bring it up because you're bringing it away. Okay, so if you do this and you bring it this way and torque it in towards your center, that's fine. That's okay to do. So you can torque your wrist if you turn it towards your center. You can't do it from a vertical punch and then turn it outward. You're, you're, you're breaking a base point. Okay, if you start this way, you can. Again, because you started a certain way, the path of the energy is going that way, that's fine to do. But you can't change it to where you're breaking from the, the base point and drawing the base away. You can always create more power in your base and turn it inward because the base right. is, is say, getting say stronger. That, say that part again, Sifu, because that was a critical piece that you just said because you can do it this way. You just can't do it from this way to that way. Not that they saw any of that. Uh, what are you, parakeet? Are you repeating what I just I said? Don't know. <laughs> all I do, people are like, you're so amazing. I'm like, yeah, I stole all of Sifu's one liners and that's all I do. I just steal stuff. All right. So there's nothing wrong with throwing a hook punch with your elbow out. You just oh gotta start that way. You can't wind up that way. If I come out, you can see I still have a base. You see that base? That can follow the path to creating that punch. That's fine to do. But you can't do a vertical and then try to bring it out. It, 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 it goes against the flow of energy. It goes against the natural uh, structure of the body um, when you go in that way. But you can turn it towards the center. You can always go into the center, which is okay. You can't turn away from center. Okay, you can't do a move where you're gonna be straight and center and then try to turn it off center. You can do that and you'll feel it. It just takes away that power because the energy is, uh, is broken from the base side. You do it this way, you'll still feel your base. If you go, like, you go outward, you're gonna feel like it's not gonna work. You'll compensate by naturally leaning or throwing your body to get more power because you can't drive the energy. Now you gotta throw mass, okay? Very so cool. uh, you gotta make sure that that's, that that's what you're doing. Hope that helps you. Ralph also said, love applying Sifu's lessons on my fellow Taekwondo friends, believers now. Thanks again. You know, we say it all the time, seeing or experiencing rather is believing. And uh, I think there would be a lot of times that, you know, a lot of people that, you know, those keyboard warriors, if they could just come and train with us for a day, they'd be a believer too. But <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole nother story. Uh, let's see, Errol says, okay, you guys are talking back and forth. Awesome, awesome. Gary says, what can you do if you have weak wrist? We can strengthen them. Would you like to show him one exercise? Well, there's two ways you can do it. You can bandage it so it can support it. Okay, but who's gonna walk around with you know, taped hands all the time, right? Uh, but the other ones is you can develop it through a lot of, a lot of training exercises. There's a lot, it's, it's a joint that has tendons which you can build from. So that's our goal. So you can train to do that. Can you show him one exercise? We have a ton of these exercises in our core training on Ennershallon.com, but can you give him one exercise? I mean, you don't have to see food. I Sifu, can do one exercise. But you know, okay. if you're feeling generous there's, tonight. There's one exercise that I'll show one. There's plenty of that we do for the wrist that, that develops in all, all the six rotations of the wrist. Okay, we'll just do one for now, okay? So uh, basically just grab any stick that, that you can lift, okay? So let's just like, you know, like, like this stick here. And it might be a little too high here. But depending on your strength, if it's too heavy for you, you can always grab towards the center more. Okay, so you can grab it like this and do this. So you want to go like this. Now, the height is up to you. You can kind of hold it to your shoulder. You can hold it center. And it's good that you can hold it different uh, positions. That'll train your muscles to hold as well. So you just want to hold it out. You can hold it in your center line. And the goal is you have to bring the stick from one end to the other end without trying to move your arm, okay? So my goal is like keep it very steady. I want to bring it up. 
I just don't want to hit the ceiling. And I want to bring it over and I want to let it go down. Okay, and you can see I'm holding my hand right here to keep that. And then you bring it back. And again, you want to just keep that wrist steady. Okay, and you want to let it control like that. And you want to do it slow and kill. Now, a lot of people, you don't watch it, you might, you might go like this. And, go, ah, ah, and you're not really using your wrist. You're actually changing the leverage in your arm and you're training uh, different parts of your muscles to do it to compensate for what your wrist can and cannot do. But if it's heavy, like I said, just grab less and less and less. Uh, you want to do like 25 times. Both ways make one count. Okay, and you do it slow. You don't let it slam. So you don't go like this, let's say, and you go and, and just let it drop. The goal is to let it come down without trying to make as much impact on the ground. So when you're like this, you just want to go slow and you want to just let it tap. And then you bring it right back and you just let it tap. And you're going to feel that wrist get very, very strong. Okay. You're going to get a very, very strong wrist from doing that. Uh, 25 times, you know, you can do it every day. Okay. Uh, if you're like, oh my gosh, my wrist really, really hurts, uh, you might have pushed yourself too hard. Just relax for that day. Give yourself a couple of days to, to rest that wrist. Um, but just next time, go lighter with the, the end. Just bring it less and less. And again, as your muscles get used to it, your tendons get used to it, you will develop that. You will get strong. You'll get strong pretty quick if you do it right. So that's one technique for you. I hope that helps. And if you want more, like I said, we have a lot of wrist training in the core training section of the training hall on entershellen.com. So feel free to go and sign up and check that out. Uh, Ralph says, this is last year for daylight saving time. Promise. Man, bro, I hope you're right. I'm praying for that. Uh, Jeffro says, daylight savings is another way to disconnect us from nature. Absolutely. Bob says, should have never messed with God's clock. Totally, brother. Amen to that. Absolutely. Um, Errol says the UK still puts the clocks forwards and backwards. Makes no sense to me. Right? Well, that's what we do here. In the spring, we spring ahead. So they take away an hour. In the fall, we fall back. And it's like, you know, pitch black at 4.30 at night, you know, uh, in the winter time. And then eventually it's, you know, 5. And eventually you get excited when it's 5.30 and, like, the sun's just setting. It's very weird. It's not okay. Not good. Um, <laughs> it's, it really messes you up well, in the winter time. I think he did it because of the farmers so they can, you know, have a better work day that's what but they said it, but it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter now anyways we got farm equipment we got lights well, we got everything we well, need it doesn't matter that, but right now it's like pitch black at the time farmers are usually be out in their field because we just sprung ahead again so whatever they're trying to do it's not working okay it's just not um and it's just messing people up and it's been messing people up internally for a long time so it, it does need to go it should have never even happened uh sand dude says i just want to tell everyone here in my youtube i'm working on in aiming for 150 push-ups in 150 days. So check that out after the live and let me know what you think about it. Awesome, brother. I'm looking forward to seeing some uh, clips from what you're doing tomorrow on the uh, members only webinar. Jeffro says that Native Americans had a saying, only the white man would think that they could make a blanket longer by cutting off a foot on the bottom and sew it to the top. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> I, I actually shared that meme like a bazillion and one times over the years because I'm like, like just, I'm disgruntled about daily like, savings time like all the time. Like, I, I'm gonna say a joke that I, I find very, very funny. So a guy walks into a pizza parlor, orders a large pizza. He goes, sits at the table, the waiter comes over to him and says, hey, would you like me to cut this into eight slices or 16? The man thinks for a second and goes, uh, can you make it eight because I can't eat 16? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Hey, Baron, in order to have an electric car, you still need what? Think about that for a moment. Have you, have, you seen, have you ever seen those uh, electric cars that need to be charged up, you know, on the go when you don't have a charger? Guess what that, you know, little thing is charged up with? Gas. Yeah, that's interesting. What, you're talking um, about hybrids? No, I'm talking about, like, have you ever seen, like, if an electric car runs out and they need to be pumped up, they get a generator that uses gas. Well, they have battery generators now. Yeah, but that still has to be, you still have to have that fully charged. If you don't, you still might have to use gas. So 
That's nice that you have an electric car, but there's lots of people that don't. And it's been proven that, you know, in certain climates, they're not the best or fully effective. And yeah, Yet, so. the battery technology's gotta catch up eventually. Eventually, yeah, but still, getting everyone to switch over, what are they gonna do, pay for everyone's cars? Because not, not everyone's no, no, gonna no. be able Gas to Gas still has a big, big hold in, in our economy right so. now. But this little rise is pushing people to buy more, more but, electric But, you know, cars. Um, hey, you may have an electric car, but did you know that all the fuel costs have been making what everything else more expensive and that's been going on for the past year and it's going to continue to go on as long as all this crazy madness happens so you might be saving a little bit of money right now but you're not saving money on all your other stuff unless you're like a breathitarian and you don't eat and your house is fully paid off and maybe you have like I, no I, taxes i, 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 I said this like 40 years ago yeah for, I, I'm, I'm like it was back when i was like two no okay um, but i've said this like years back when i taught my old school i said gas is what controls the world okay because we yeah. deliver everything because of gas right your your foods that you eat the clothes you buy yeah. the materials that you get like yeah. the items that you get for your house for, it's all delivered because of trucks <laughs> and gas and when gas price goes up that has to go up and when that goes up companies have to raise their rates uh, uh people have to you know they ask for more money because they get you know this is how inflation occurs and so um Gas is the really means of why, you know, our economy can stay uh, low. And the biggest problem is, is like we are, as a country, exporting more than we're importing. Our gas, we have more oil in our country than all the other countries put together. Okay? We have more oil than that, but we won't drill. Yeah. And our, 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 our former president was doing that. And we, we were at, during that reign, we, we, we were energy efficient. We were energy independent. Oh, yeah, we were energy independent. We were energy Well, we're efficient. starting to move towards it, yes. Not now. No, not now. Not no, now. no, no, no. I'm talking about before. Uh, they, they but did, as soon as since our, Mr. Our, Smiting our got into Smiting, office, he was like, mm -mm. The first thing he did in executive <laughs> order was cut the X pipeline. We're not going to get my two cents is, hey, you want to hey, move to, to like, to, to, to more energy efficient means, that's fine, that's great. Yeah. But you can do that in a, in a, in a way that doesn't where slaughter the American people. people yeah. shouldn't have to be paying the prices that we're actually paying. Yeah, well, you know, it's there's Putin's a better fault. way to go about it. Yeah, yes, yeah, suppose it's his right. fault. Well, it is. Because... And it's Corona's fault. Yes. And you notice we don't talk about Corona anymore? We talk about the Ukraine war? Like, we're you notice how that just disappeared? <laughs> We can go to a hey, lot listen, of things. We're not here. We are we're three not educated not people. Look, look, look at us at Rumble. Right, who we'll, knows how we'll long we're going to be on YouTube. He's breaking down. We're, we're <laughs> just done. We're just done. He's breaking we've, down. we've been trying. That's how you cost we're me $100 to put gas in my car? We're just getting beat down. For to what? To fill it halfway? <laughs> Oh, whoa, gosh, not yet. But a full tank, it's, 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 it's well, a little... Well, by the end of the summer, it might be. They're saying to their projections. we're going to get up to about $7 by the end of the summer. If it is $7, can you imagine? Seriously, uh, I joke. Bicycle. How much? We already talked. We're Why do you think I again. bought my electric <laughs> unicycle? I can ride here yeah, and I home. I have donuts. I'm going <laughs> to ride my bicycle. I was going to say, well, yeah, that'll give us more exercise than... I used to, I used to ride 24 miles... Four days a week. Yeah, we already decided that when it's nice closer. out, we're just going to be riding. The well, I got an electric car, you know, a hybrid <laughs> car. So I get here, trip. free fuel, oh, and I go back, I charge it, rowing, yeah, and I, I go home. Yo, <laughs> it, you know, we want to do this We want to do this seminar, and I'm pushing it because I don't know. I honestly, truly don't know what prices for anything are going to look like come this summer. It might, yeah. Dude, we got, think about everything that we've been through the past couple. We got stimulus checks. We got nuts. this. We got that. Government's Nothing's free. Nothing money. Nothing is free. It's you know, all boom, scam. All lots live. of money, dude. Right? So, yeah. So, if, if we do this seminar, if you guys are interested, show up because the next one might cost $9,000 to get to just because, you know, gas costs thousand dollars again. Could you imagine? Holy oh, cow. Man. We'll be doing online seminars at that point in time for sure. Uh, Money for Nothing says smash the like <laughs> button people. Yes. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and make sure to tap the bell icon so you can say yes, YouTube. I definitely, definitely want to get notifications when these people go live and when they post other stuff. Uh, you Toby says, I'm honestly scared what will happen. Should I attend the live seminar? <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you mean? Are you scared about if it's going to hurt? Are you going to be tired and exhausted afterwards? Yes, yes, but you're going to learn a ton and you're going to be 10 times more amazing because of it. So I'll let you decide what you want to do, AD Tolby. <laughs> I remember our first Wing Chun seminar. Oh, man. They're, they were... 
it was funny. We had to like tell everyone like, y'all, y'all need to like calm down. They were all like forcing and going to each other and everyone was like all bruised up and stuff. I was like rubbing out people's like, you know, stagnant chi and it was, it was crazy. Definitely bring some dit dat jow. You might need it. I can't make no promises if you will or will not. Bob Bader says truth. Money says, uh, for nothing said, a bad reaction to the COVID jab. Uh, a lot of people have. There's been people that have even died from it. I'm sorry that you had one. Um, we are not. And also, it ma- you know, it matters when we do seminars and every person I've ever dealt with, you get what you give <laughs> and you give what you get. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, you're not alone. Money for nothing. Um, and that, unfortunately, a lot of that's been, you know, pushed <laughs> under the rug. But for people that pay attention and test and prove all things, we know what's been going on for quite some time. Never says creation is abundant. All lack here is contrived. Absolutely. It's all man-made, brother. Absolutely. Pam says, I hate trying to learn martial arts with guys who want to treat you different because you're a woman. When you're being attacked, they're not going to take it easy on you. Yes, sister. That is correct, Pam. And that's why we don't play that game here at Enter Shaolin. So uh, it's probably why we don't have many women training either. It is what it is. Uh, only the tough survive here, right? But Pam, I know you're a tough girl, so... I'm not worried about that, but you're right. It doesn't do, and we talked about that. It's not going to do anyone any good. I remember one time, like one of the videos that we posted, it was some, a little train session with uh, Sifu Larry and I, and someone was like, oh my God, is, is she okay? I remember also at one of our seminars, someone asked me like, if I'm basically being abused, like, am I okay? And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm just trading and having a great time. Like what's wrong with you people? If they baby me, then I'm not going to be able to handle stuff when something happens. Cause like you said, Pam, when a situation arises, guess what your attacker is not thinking about? Oh, you're a woman. Let me be easy on you. No, they're probably attacking you because they think you're weak because you're a woman. So, amen, sister. That's all I got to say about that. All Women right. are weaker than men physically. Doesn't mean they're inferior well, to men. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, there Lord. Go. Are you going to go there? No, I mean, no, we're probably already no, demonetized. No. So, if I you want to go there. I see some really, really strong women type folk, you know, doing We're not some, talking your some... Amazon versus your. <laughs> You're the weakest man. I'm talking about on the average. Well, well it depends yes, on, on the how average, you're identifying. Yes. That's all I'm yes. saying. Yeah. Sure. What do you I'm identify saying, as a but giraffe? But when I say weaker, like they're expecting you not to be able to handle your stuff, okay? And let's just say uh, me and Pam well, are going to give them a run for I identify run. as King Kong. Who's going to beat me now? <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Okay, let's move on. My friend says I have fight on the 28th. You're going to be okay. Um, Money for Nothing says, I have a fight coming on the 28th. My tenant wants to fight me. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Because he hasn't paid rent and I won't take accountability. Is that, do you have a question, brother? You just, um, I don't want to fight. I'd really hurt him and he wants to fight. Fight him in court. That was the whole point. Court was developed, by the way. If you fight him, he's probably going to have someone filming it. He's going to somehow spin it to look like you're attacking him because you wouldn't get, he wouldn't pay the rent. And then all of a sudden he's going to be like, you know, get money from you. You see what I'm saying? Don't do this. Don't play into this game. Back in the day, people fought over stuff like this where they would duel pistols, swords, whatever. Right. And then they were saying, look, we can't kill each other. That's why they developed court. Court, that's why you say you battle in court. That took the place of people yeah, battling when they killed each other. you need to take care of this dude um, right on so out of court. That's why they do that. Um, so you want to fight him? Fight him in court. You know, it's legal. Well, he doesn't safe. want to fight him at all, but yes, fight, well, him, in fight him in court. court. That's and what you got to do. That's why we have a court system. It's to take away from people having to physically hurt each other. And no, it's not perfect or anything, but if he's not doing his part and all those restrictions, you know, that we're covering people, not paying their rent and stuff, some of them intentionally that could have paid their rent, which, by the way, not good because we're all going to be paying for that and already are paying for that, okay? Um, so, yeah, take, take this man to court, bro. You, you're on the legal rights. And, you know, if he starts threatening you and trying to, like, you know, bait you and stuff, do not play into this man's game because he's trying to turn it around and trying to become the victim, and it's going to just be bad for you. So don't, don't play with them. Use your wits. Be smart about this one. That's why we have police. That's why we have that. It's to protect our civil rights. So if he's not paying, be smart about it. Remember, I told you, yeah. use your brains, not your body first. Get the police to with you. Say, listen, I got to get this guy, get his a thing, convict him, get him out or whatever. You got to throw him out, whatever. Just say, I need police here. I am in fear of my life. He's threatened for me. So I got to get someone here. 
let him do the stupid move and strike you and then go to jail for that. And then it would be easier to take him out. Yeah, it would um, be a lot easier to get rid of him. Absolutely. Uh, violence is the last thing you want to create. You, like I said, always beat him with the brain first. I'll think him before mm -hmm. you upbeat him. And if it has to come down to that, then yeah, then fight him if you have to because you have to. But do it here first. Beat him here first. And then beat him here after if, he, if it has to come down to that. I always out, try to outwit people with my brain first. Uh, first off, I'm very sharp with it. And I can have that when I'm 90. Unless I develop Alzheimer's. But that doesn't run in my family. But uh, I practice my brain. Your brain is like, like a muscle, okay? If you don't use it, you, it will shrink and it will die. Uh, I've learned this a long time ago. Your brain needs stimulation, which is why you ever see people, uh, when they get older, they're not physically active. Their brain starts to slow down. Yeah, you it's because they need stimulation. Keep so, learning, keep you know, growing, keep moving. Do movements, exercise, all these things. Like you've ever seen people like rock climb this, their brain's still sharp when they're 80 years old because they have stimulations all the time. You yeah. need to stimulate the brain. This is why I like to outthink people. That's why I like to play video games. This is why I like train. This is why I always use my brains to do everything with me because without your brain, your body's just a, 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 a meat, you know, soup, meat suit. It's just, it's meat. It can't do anything without the brain. So train the brain, use your brain. Don't be a meat suit. Yeah, and, and just basically, like I said, call the police. Get them to stand there. So the guy wants to start something, he's like, crap, the police are here. I can't start. And start you the eviction process. If he's really behind and he's yeah. not caring and doesn't want to pay and rent. Filming stuff, is great because now you have it as a witness. You can go for court. I tried to go peacefully. I tried to be honorably. I tried to do this civilly, and this is how he acted. Yeah. Now I want, I want to press charge. And you can sue him. So it's, it's like Yeah, a, but I think he's trying to go to you because he wants to try to sue you that's that's what i'm getting to that. just be careful bro do do the right stuff I, I know you will but you know make sure you you know take care of your own and make sure to be safe and smart about this because he's trying he's trying to scam you for sure uh matthew says all right everyone it's been fun but i have to go for now looking forward to more webinars awesome matthew thank you for coming out and look forward to seeing you soon again well we're gonna be done too right yeah yeah, yeah we're wrapping it yeah. up yeah it's i just saw what time it is Money uh, for nothing. Well, I have to pay. He can't live for free off of me. Yeah, I know. I know it's not free for you to, you know, go to the courts and start that process. It is what it is. But do you really want someone, you know, A, freeloading off of you, B, you know, trying to like start fights with you? It's definitely worth, unfortunately, spending that money to be able to start that eviction process and get him out of there. It is what it is. Um, yeah, don't go knocking him out, though. <laughs> Unless, you know, a life or death situation, but, you know, make sure you, you know, do everything that you need to do and, and protect yourself. I am says, talk about martial arts confessions. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, right? Uh, LT Newbie says, what are the most groin air strikes? Uh, you know what? We will cover this LT Newbie next week. I'm going to save this one. Uh, we'll cover that a little bit. Uh, Sandude says, I MVC do Jamie because we got all the practice with Sifu, but I now I can hardly take the pain. She can take because <laughs> she's strong. Uh, Baron says, women have a stronger spirit. Maybe, maybe. Um, could very well be, but I mean, I think, I think, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a male or female thing. I think some women have a warrior spirit and some men have a warrior spirit and those people tend to have strong spirits. So. For all that's on the web uh, webinar, please strike the like. Yeah. It helps us. Yes, please I mean, That's do. all you have to do. We're not asking yeah, for money. Like, We're not asking share. you to do anything except strike the like. If you want to donate money, we'll gladly be very, very happy to take it and utilize it for the, the greater good We're of happy to Challenge. accept it. Absolutely. Um, as Sandy says, what's the difference between traditional Wing Chun and my fighting Wing Chun? We'll cover that uh, next week, so make sure you subscribed if you haven't already. And come back next week yep. if you want to know the question, yep. uh, answer that question. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Ed says, file an eviction and have a process serve a court to them. Yes, definitely, definitely. Brand says, style fighting without fighting. Use the law. Yes. Use it to the best of your ability and stuff like that. I mean, it's not perfect. The court system is not perfect. But, but it's the best in the world. It's the best that, you know, we have and work with it as best as you can. It's the best in the world. Okay. A lot of countries. Okay. You are actually guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. This country, you're innocent until proven guilty. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, by the way. It has to be beyond the shadow of a doubt. If there's a doubt, you're not guilty. Ralph says, brain stimulation till you die. Keep practicing no matter what age. Yes, keep going, keep learning, keep growing. Absolutely. Money for nothing says, good night, everyone. Thanks for the chat. You're so welcome. Ralph says, nice evening to Sifu, CJ Jamie, and Sifu Larry. Good night to you as well. Good night, fam. 
Um, all right, let me just make sure nothing back over here on Facebook. All right, family, thanks so much for coming out. It's been fun as always. If you're a member, I hope to see you on tomorrow's uh, webinar on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're not a member yet and you would like to join and get access to all of our training, feel free to go to nrshawn.com forward slash join and check it out. If not, we'll see you guys and gals next week. Just to let you know, CJ Jamie was not feeling well, but she came to do the webinar for you guys. Yeah, I was like, man, was I, was I was so tired. I've been working hard today, but I was like, I can't disappoint you all. So here I am, and I took a beating. Bam. I'm going to take one tomorrow, too. All right, fam. Love you all. Peace. Have a good night. God bless. See you soon. You're dropping your hands a lot. I can feel it. I shall no longer drop hands. I hands! You're going like this? Feel it? Yes. Do wait, I wait, feel wait. like I'm dropping or laying? You're laying. Right. You're dro right. Now, when I do this. That's because because people I hit, train, they're lazy. And I and you got lazy. <laughs> Just got lazy. They made me lazy. See, I blame them. I take no responsibility. Okay. So, no, no. Try again. Let's go like this. If I do this, I want you to think of a woo. There you go. Oh, that's what you're you trying do. to make a bomb come right back up. It's why, a mistake. Why, why, why spend energy? Right, exactly. Exactly. So if I do this, make the woo. You see? So quick, quick, you can recover. And you notice with my hands, when you ever do attack me, attack me. What do you see me doing? I always make the woo. I don't try to, to bring your hands anywhere. I don't try to do anything. But recover the woo. Then you can turn your wrist and come in for the attack from that. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So try to, when we move, this way, okay? Oh, yeah. okay. So, so when we move, right, it's, see, it's got to be... <laughs> so we'll, <laughs> ah, hey, what was that? <laughs> you're, you're pulling from the pressure. I want you to base. So every time I put pressure into you, I want you to put pressure back from scared. the elbow. Not from your hands. Put pressure back in the elbow and raise the hands. There you go. Like, like put pressure on me. Don't do this. Right, because that's what I'm doing. Do this. Put the pressure in the elbow. Aye. So it can pop you up. But notice I have forward intent. Do this again. Let me see. So. You don't feel none of that in your shoulder? No, nothing. Here, do it on this side. No, no, no. No, because I feel nothing. OK. Because it's not supposed to be like this. Okay. I Because I based it. And notice it allows me to enter. So a lot of times, if you're attacking me, let's say, see, you have that forward intent. You see the feel the base? Yep. Do it again. Yes. There's no base. No. So your hands are losing because the base is gone. And because the base is gone, the wrist can't support itself. It, it doesn't have the ability to support. So if we're like this, make the woo, make the woo. You can have a fook, like punch me. You can have a fook, but turn it into the woo in the end. Don't be like this. Aye. You see how it feels like I'm, I'm trying to push you away? Mm -hmm. The woo hand is a good technique because it allows you to find that control. So if I'm like this, does it feel like you're making the woo? Or it feels like you're pushing me. I'm pushing you. That's there you go. That's I wasn't it. pushing. <laughs> and you didn't feel like you had to push, right? So when you're moving, create that woo hand. Notice how I'm laying on you. Do I feel like I'm laying on you? Nope. That's why you can jump me down real easy. Do it again. I can't. See how it feels like I'm hooking and, and, and getting that into you? Yeah, you're you're like you're you're like right in there. Yeah. So when people are doing moves, remember, make a woo when I do this. Ready? So, see? No, have the elbow forward. That'll give you more intent to go back.